Hello everybody. This video is a direct continuation of the previous one in which I explained how, if you were to work systematically in a concentrated fashion for 15 minutes each and every single day for a year, you might hope to get through this entire manual and not just get through it, but to assimilate it, to internalize it, and in so doing, bring yourself up to what I called a, an advanced beginner's level, to give yourself a complete overview of the grammar of the language and the base vocabulary, but to still be in the beginner range, uh, but well on your way to learning the language. And so in this video, I'm going to tell you how to, uh, or show you how I would work through the successor volume to bring yourself up to more of an intermediate level in the language. Uh, like the previous video, this will probably be about 30 minutes long because I'll be talking about the entire process, but at the core of it will be a 15 minute sample simulated lesson of how I would work through this if I were truly learning the language. Uh, this is the way you can see I have the uh, intermediate volumes for Arabic and Russian that I have worked through uh, more in a true fashion more recently. And in point of fact, if you're really curious to see uh, an authentic lesson, I do have a video on my site about well, showing myself working through this volume in Russian. Um, it is in Russian and uh, I don't have the 15 minute time constraint that I'm talking about in this video. So it's a, it's a longer video, but if you are curious to see that, you can see this. So uh, before I get started, let me talk about one of the main issues that came up in, in the comments and concerns, um, and that is people wanting to know, really, where can you expect to get by doing this? Um, as I said uh, just now and in that video, uh, I would view the procedure of learning a language to be a lifelong process. Uh, what I propose when I say to teach yourself a language is not even hinting that you would get anywhere near fluency by working your way through this or even your way through this. You still have uh, quite a lot of, of many years, many hours of work and exposure to go before you would get to anywhere uh, near what could be legitimately called fluent, but you can certainly give yourself a foundation, which is what I proposed in here. And what I proposed was, again, 15 minutes a day, each and every single day, which works out to about 90 hours. And some people wanted to talk about hours of, of learning a language, and that is a good gauge of how far you can expect to get. Um, 90 hours is, and I've been a college professor most of my life, a college semester is 45 hours of instruction. So 90 hours is uh, two semesters of instruction. But I think that by teaching yourself a language, um, you can do it more effectively than in those two semesters of instruction. Uh, if you think about it, the 90 hours that you give yourself by doing it each and every single day is the embodiment of slow and steady wins the race. Whereas uh, if you study two semesters in college, um, you are studying probably uh, two or three days a week. Uh, and then you have breaks and then you have a long break in the middle and it's condensed in a couple of um, a couple of months. So uh, it's a different distribution of time. That said, the number of hours that you put into a language, of course, if you are going to speak a language, know a language to a high level, you have to put in many hours of, of quality work. But hours themselves, you can, you can waste hours. They're not necessarily giving you lots of results. So I don't think it's hard to imagine how, to a certain degree, um, you can condense the number of hours that you need to learn and be more effective. So I do think that the 90 hours that you can get from this are equivalent not just to the 90 hours that you would get um, in, in university instruction, but perhaps to, uh, you would also be doing homework there. And if you took it into the second year, that'd be another 90 hours. So with homework and, and things, you would be studying 270 or 360 hours in, in two years of college instruction. And I think that this can, could possibly be the equivalent of that. Um, another gauge of the difficulty of French is from the Foreign Service Institute or the Defense Language Institute, which ranks French as a category one language and says that you need about 600 hours to get to what they call general proficiency, general professional proficiency, which is about the C1 level. Um, so you're not approaching that yet with this, but uh, you're looking at maximizing the number of hours uh, by studying more effectively. So again, I just mentioned some, some numbers, and again, people want to know, would this get you to B2 or 
uh, B1 or A2. And uh, as similar as you see on these here, they are putting on their advanced books that they'll get you to C1. And yes, on their, their current editions of here, they're putting B1, B2 on these volumes. I think that that's attainable for some people, but in general, I think that's a bit high. I would take it down a notch. I think these might get you to the content be about B2 wise and the content here more like uh, B1 wise, but um, I would hesitate to generalize and say, you will get to that level. There's so many factors that influence how well you're going to learn. There's talent and experience and closeness of language. Uh, for one thing, I mean, some people are have more of an, a, a gift or an aptitude for language than others. Um, some people have already studied two or three languages, and some people this is their first language. Uh, for a native English speaker, Eng French is quite a close language. It's a, it's a cousin language genetically, and historically speaking, we've got most of our vocabulary from French. So French is rather a close language. But um, if you're coming from another language base, if you're coming from Korean, say, French is a very difficult language. Um, and if you haven't learned another language before and you don't have a pretty good aptitude, it's going to be a totally different task from if you have the, these, these qualities. And then there's the implementation. Are you studying each and every single day or are you having breaks in between? When you sit down to study, are you focused or are you distracted? These will affect the outcome of, of how much you can learn. So uh, I hesitate to give um, a, a number there, but if you study systematically, you will definitely make progress. You'll get yourself to that's what I call the advanced beginner level from this book. And then once you're done with this, you can be ready to move on to this volume. So let's talk about this volume now. If you're going to be working with this volume, um, I would say the first thing you need to do is, as in the video I made about uh, reading, uh, reading skills, you should give it a good look over. And you'll realize that even though it's the same company, it's a similar textbook, um, there's some important differences here. This book is really structured around building your, your working knowledge of the grammar of the language. So in this book, there are actually 113 lessons. You can't do lesson 80 after, but unless you've done lesson 70, uh, nor would you want to. But when you look over this book, you realize um, several things that this is much more focused on introducing you to the culture and the, the, uh, the literature of the language than the grammar of the language. And when you look it over, you'll see that the lessons at the first, they're about the same length, but they get much longer. Uh, they get to the point when you say, hmm, could I possibly do this in 15 minutes? And the answer is no. So um, you need to modify what you're going to do to work your way through this book. There's no way you could follow the same procedure in 15 minutes and hope to get through some of the more advanced lessons in it. So that's the first truth of language learning that I'm going to have to spring on you is that um, you can go from zero knowledge to advanced beginner learning a book like this by studying for 15 minutes a day. Um, but to go from beginner to intermediate, that's probably not enough. You probably need to work for a half an hour a day at this. Um, even if you work for half an hour a day, though, I would suggest that you not sit down and work for 30 minutes at a time, but rather that you have two 15 minute time blocks. It's much easier to stay focused and attentive when you work in shorter blocks of time than when you work in longer blocks of time. Also, um, you might say to yourself, gosh, I just don't have the time to add more time. I can't do it. So if you want to insist on uh, doing only 15 minutes a day, you can try to stay with that, but your progress will be very slow at this point. In either case, uh, what I would definitely suggest, the first main modification between this book and this book, is that we are going to want to separate the shadowing work, that is the listening and repeating simultaneously, from the reading and analysis work. So uh, I would suggest also, because this book is structured in such a fashion that it's introducing literature and culture progressively, um, you could possibly, it's got 70 lessons, you could possibly do lesson 60 before lesson 50 with, uh, if you wanted to. I would not recommend that you do that, but you could. So what I would suggest is that we separate out the shadowing portion of this and that 
instead of trying to work our way really straight through this look, we take more of what I call peeling an onion approach. We're going to cycle through it multiple times, and each time we're going to peel a different layer off, and we're going to go deeper and deeper and deeper. It's kind of what you're doing when you're reviewing this book, but with a different procedure. So I would recommend you take a, when you shadow, you shadow for 15 minutes. When you shadow, you do what I showed you in the first three steps of the previous video. Um, you have blind shadowing, you have shadowing, saying French, listening to French, but reading English with your eyes. And then you have shadowing uh, when you read French with your eyes and you say it and you listen to it all at the same time. I would recommend that you do 15 minutes of that through the entire volume, the entire book, going over it multiple times. Uh, and that would be either one 15 minute session in a day, or if you can't find another 15 minutes on alternate days, you do shadowing and on alternate days you do text analysis. So we're separating out the shadowing portion from the analysis portion so that we can focus more on that and get through some of these lessons at this time. So I've got many of the same tools here, but I've left my MP3 payer with the, uh, the headphones wound up right, because I'm not going to be using that today to show you in this sample video. And I also have, because I'm at the intermediate level now, I've got some supplementary texts. You might want to have a verb book, a dictionary, a grammar, and some grammatical workbooks to supplement what you're going to do. So um, if you uh, could come over here, let's look at the book together and we'll see some things that I've done to it. Just the way you see in my Arabic and Russian books, I've got all sorts of stickers in them. The way that you, I work through this book is I have a scheme where I say, okay, these blue labels sticking out at the side, I put them at the beginning of each new week. So this is lesson one, and this is lesson eight, and this is lesson 15. So each of these marks off a new week. So I'm aware of what I'm doing in any given week. And today I'm gonna to work through you, with you, on uh, lesson, um, lesson 30. And that is in the middle, I guess, also of the fifth week. And so I'm going to be saying the same way. I'm imagining that I have been working on this book for about not five weeks because it takes longer to go through with them. And then I also have these yellow labels here are showing the last lesson that I have reviewed inside each of those weeks. Because if I were to follow the same procedure that I did in the previous volume, today I'm going to try to do lesson 30, that would mean I'm going to review lesson 29. But lesson 29 is too long to review, and if I stay only reviewing here, I won't get back and review these cyclically. So the same way that I peel the onion with my shadowing by going over the whole material, I'm going to work my way systematically by saying, okay, uh, each time I do a new lesson, which is where I have the, um, the, the big sticker here, I am going to go back and take turns going through the old past lessons and review the one, the yellow sticker, where I last left off, just reviewed, the one where I have the orange label. So today I am going to review lesson three and learn lesson 30. Okay? so. This is how I would divide up the book, how I would get ready. And let's start a lesson where I am now going to do pretty much the same thing that I did in the earlier book. But again, I've separated out the shadowing and I'm going over it, cycling through, peeling the onion. So on a given day, I might not have shadowed lesson three while I do this. I might have been shadowing somewhere completely else, but I'm going around and around and around and around. Um, Ideally, when I'm doing the shadowing, I'm literally walking around as I do it, and I am going to come back to it. So I should have the sounds of this resonating in my head, and I've reviewed this. So let me go, and for your benefit, my benefit too, those of you who don't know French, uh, as I as a learner, what I'm doing is making the correspondence between the lessons. So when I review a lesson, I'm going to focus on doing it this way. Troisième leçon, faisons connaissance. Nous allons suivre l'histoire de deux jeunes gens dans le vie de tous les jours, vie de tous les jours, everyday life. Nous verrons leurs préoccupations, uh, worries, et leurs plaisirs, 
Et de cette façon, nous saurons peut-être mieux comment on vit aujourd'hui en France. So the notes here are, remember to check up on irregular verbs, and they give me one savoir, je serai, tu seras, okay. And then we talked about, if you remember the last one, the use of on, and here's on impersonally used, so I'm reviewing all of that. Place aux dames, voici Anne-Marie, elle a 22 ans, et elle est agent de voyage. And here they say agent de voyage. This is interesting because there's gender in France. So she's Anne-Marie, but she's an agent. So we have le ministre can be Madame Leblanc. So uh, it's the difference between gender, grammatical gender, and other things. Okay, I've got that. Elle travaille à Paris, avenue de l'Opéra, et habite la banlieue l'Ouest. Okay, time about where people live. Elle est passionnée de musique et adore le cinéma. Et voici Laurent, ce jeune homme de 20 ans, est en deuxième année de lettres à la Sorbonne. So it's telling me cultural notes. Be aware, Laurent, Laurence, Dominique, and Claude are both male and female names. Studies, Sorbonne is the oldest university in Paris. Okay, cultural notes, I'm getting this. Ils se connaissent depuis deux mois, okay, depuis, and since this is a review lesson, this is telling me to go up and look at the previous, the, the, the full grammatical notes, but I've done that, I'm, f I'm familiar with now how you say this. Ils se sont rencontrés par hasard au quartier latin, mais le premier rencontre n'a pas été très romantique. Écoutons plutôt la version d'Anne-Marie. Okay, I'm reviewing this. This is not too hard. It's the third lesson picking up from the previous book. I will do these exercises again, which once more are um, using the vocabulary from previous lessons sometimes, but just reworking it. Je comprends mieux comment on vit en France la vie de tous les jours. Essayez ceci, vous verrez, c'est très efficace. Il est passionné d'art et elle adore la musique. Elle travaille ici depuis six mois. Elle est ingénieure. On s'est rencontrés en vacances cette année. Tu veux dire, nous nous sommes rencontrés. C'est mieux. Okay. So I've done this exercise here. And now let's stop and go back over there. Do you remember these fill in the blank exercises from the previous book? Um, I did them orally. Um, and these lessons, whereas these exercises are very valuable because they're reworking the vocabulary and you have them on the tape uh, or the, the audio so you can shadow them. Uh, these are not on there. And these little fill in the blank exercises, to be quite frank, um, you, maybe the first time you do them, they're okay, but they're really quite useless. They, they don't add very much. Um, and so what you can do I would say you have two options. Asimil builds himself, and it truly is, um, as an intuitive method. You don't really need these if you can learn intuitively. If you're okay saying, I don't find grammar very interesting. Uh, I, I'm not particularly interested in being able to detail all sorts of things. As long as I speak right and don't make mistakes, I'm fine. So um, if you're that kind of person, then you can just skip this. But if you're the kind of person who finds grammar interesting and fascinating, like I do, um, then you're going to want to replace these with something else. So that is what I do at this stage. So come back over here. So <clears throat> instead of doing these fill in the blank exercise over and over again, when I exercise, I've got a supplementary grammar book, supplementary grammar exercises, and I'm going to do some of these instead. So each time I review something, I will come back over here and I will do these in place of that. So I'm going to do, for example, um, this exercise. I have five things here, five here. I'm going to, this says, put the following phrases into the passé composé, the past tense. So these are present tense. I'm putting them in the past. Uh, I've got 
on n'entend rien, one doesn't hear anything, so that's going to become on n'a rien entendu. Look over here, yes, on n'a rien, one didn't hear anything. Je les aime tous, I them all love, I love them all. Je les ai tous aimés, je les ai tous aimés, I got that right. Nous ne voyons personne, we don't anybody see, we don't see anyone. Nous n'avons vu personne, nous n'avons vu personne. And elle en achète quelques-unes, she of them buys some of them, she buys some of them. That will become elle en a acheté quelques-unes, yes, elle en, I've got that right. Vous n'en gardez aucun, you of them, you don't keep any of them, you don't keep any, uh, vous n'en avez gardé aucun, okay. So, um, I have done in lieu of these lessons here, I have supplemented with something else that I find more useful. When you get to a more advanced stage, you not only put in more time, you need to do some things that are slightly different. You need to find some supplementary material and modify what you're doing. So this is one way that I have done that. So now I've used four and a half minutes of the 15 minutes that I want to dedicate towards working through the analysis and the new lesson part of this, um, this lesson. Uh, and so now I started with that because, as I know, I might not get through the full lesson, the longer lessons. I've got in this book, I've got literary excerpts from Victor Hugo's Les Miserables, a long novel. I've got a full, it's not a full chapter, but it's a five-page lesson. There are excerpts from Marcel Proust and, and um, Honoré de Balzac and other, there's poetry in here. So uh, in many of the following the longer lessons, I'm not going to get all the way through them. So. Whereas in this volume, I started by doing the new lesson because I wanted to make sure I made good progress through it. Um, and then if I had time, I reviewed some of the immediately preceding lessons. With this volume, I start by systematically making sure I review everything in return. Uh, and and uh, then I will move on and do at least a portion of a new lesson. Okay, so now that I've done that, let's try lesson 30. Come back over here, and we're going to pretend lesson 30 is our new lesson for today. So, uh, again, I've been cycling through the shadowing, so now I'm just going to make the correspondence. Trentième leçon, les débuts de la révolution. Laurent veut vérifier ses notes. Aussi, il prend un livre d'histoire et l'ouvre au chapitre correspondant. La situation en cet hiver de 1789 était catastrophique. Le chômage, unemployment, et les mauvaises récoltes, bad crops, aggravées par un froid exceptionnel, sapaient le moral du peuple. So here we're going to look at the notes, and they're going to be more cultural than grammatical. Sapé, to pull that, we get this word in English, to sap your strength, okay. And then this is very interesting. At some point in the past, I really did make a, a green star here. Do not confuse le moral, the, mor the morale, the spirits. Elle m'a beaucoup remonté le moral. She really raised my spirits with la morale, the morals. C'est contraire à la morale. It's immoral. Faire de la morale, to moralize. Aha, uh -huh. so that's really interesting. That's why I put a star there. So each time I go back, I'll see this. Le comté to count. Le roi, Louis XVI, réuni. Réuni? No one. Alors, euh, les états généraux, ces trois assemblées, Réuni looks strange to me for called together. Let's go look at note one together. Because this is the last major tense we have to learn. Okay, It's not used in modern spoken French, but in literary French. It's a past tense and has several names. Le prêterie, le passé simple, le passé défini. But we're going to call it the past historic. So how is it formed? Donner, okay, for first class verbs in ER. 
Donner, donna, donna, donam, donat, donner. No exceptions. Circumflex on the A. For manger, we're going to add an E to keep the sound soft. So I've already got some stars here. Verbs like vendre and finir add E, 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 im, it, ir to the stem. Okay. And then irregular verbs like vouloir or boire become bou, 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 boum, bout, bur. Voulou, 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 voulou. Aha. This is very different. And how do you use it? Okay. It replaces the passé composé, but it's a literary tense which carries the narrative forward by describing actions or events in the past. Il se leva, prit la bouteille, se versa un verre et le bu. He got up, took the bottle, poured himself a glass, and drank it. Okay. But you don't use it to set the scene. Il faisait froid et une gébrine tombait sur la ville. Okay, it was cold and a light drizzle was falling. Okay, so that's pretty interesting to me. And that's pretty important. I'm learning French in order to read literature. So I want to make sure that I know this really well. So I've already put stars here. So let's go back and, well, let me see if where I can see that now. I've got réuni, okay? Comté, that's imperfect. Trois sont députés, chacune pour le clergé et la noblesse. Et six sont pour la bourgeoisie et les paysans, le tiers état. Les états discutèrent. There it is. I just saw that, right? Discutèrent. Okay. Discutèrent. Okay, there's that ending. Des réformes, mais sans résultat. Uh -huh. Et en juin 1789, les députés du tiers-état se séparèrent. That's it again, right? Okay. So, you know what my mind is thinking right now? I'm thinking that I'm not satisfied with this information here. I'm really interested in knowing what this is and how this works. This is a long text. I'm probably going to not get through it anyway, so I'm going to pause where I was, and I'm going to go outside of Asimil and see somewhere else if I can get some more information about that passé simple. So I've got my grammar book here, and my grammar book is all in French. I don't recommend that you have an all French grammar book at this stage, but that's what I have. So let's pretend this is in English and see more about the passé simple. Okay, it gives us an action that was finished and done at a specific point in the past. It's different from the imperfect, which expresses duration. So, en ante sans cesse, du bruit au grenier, on y monta. That's imperfect, that's passé simple. One heard. Non-stop noise coming from the attic, so one went up. Uh-huh. The passé simple is different from the present of the indicative because it expresses something completely done at the moment where one, what one is talking about. Chacun sait que Christophe Colomb découvrit l'Amérique en 1492. Everybody knows that Christopher Columbus discovered, passé simple, America in 1492. So I want to know about this, so I'm going to go back to my grammar book and see if I can find in the exercises on verbs. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find something for passé simple, and here it is. So I'm going to try the same thing and see if I can put some of these things into the passé simple, put the, verb, the following verbs into the past simple, and the ten person indicated. So, il traduire, what would that become? That would become, that would become, oh my God, I don't know. But that would become, il traduisir. Hmm, that was hard. Nous jetons, would that become er, would that become nous jetam? Yes, nous jetam. And then, elle contredire, um, what would that be? Oh, elle contredire, that looks just the same. You know what? This is something that I'm going to need to work on. And so rather than stumbling my way through this here, let me try to practice a little bit by pulling up my French verb book 
and just taking some verbs and seeing if I can get embrasser, passé simple, would that be embrassa, embrasse, embrasser, embrassa, embrassa, embrassam, embrassat, embrasser. Okay, and uh, here is ouvrir. What will that be? Let me practice. Ouvri, 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 ouvrim, ouvrit, ouvrir. Give myself some pattern practice. Paraître. Parou, 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 paroum, parout, parure. And then plaire. Plus, 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 plume, plut, plure. And pleurer. Pleurer, pleura, pleura, pleuram, pleurat, pleurer. So I have a better feel for now of what the passé simple is. Let me go back to my text and see if I can pull it out a bit more. Where did I stop? Les députés du tiers état se séparèrent des autres. Ils se proclamèrent, there it is again, Assemblée nationale, le roi s'y opposa, that is it again, mais du, what's note for, okay, du is imperfect, devoir, je du, tu du, il du, nous du, vous du, il dure, okay, um, du finir par accepter. Avec l'accord de lui, les députés formèrent, there it is again, l'Assemblée constituante et le 9 juillet, la monarchie absolue cessa, there it is, d'exister. Mais lui voulait se venger de son humiliation et le 11 juillet, il rappela, there it is again, ses troupes à Paris. Et il renvoya, there it is again, Necker, le ministre, qui lui avait conseillé le modération. Les Parisiennes furent excédées. La foule se rassembla, there it is again, place royale, et se dirigea, there it is again, with that little e that they said needed to be inserted to keep it soft. Vers la forteresse de la Bastille. And note six, here's the past historic of être. Je fus, tu fus, il fut, nous fûmes, vous fut, ils furent. Okay. Où elle donna l'assaut, les prisonniers furent libérés et le gouverneur de l'aune fut décapité. I should be putting an asterisk here because that's a very common verb, right? So I'm going to make sure I see that when I review. Lui, ému par la violence... That's it again. Repris, there it is again. Necker et accepta a third time la cocarde tricolore. En octobre, la foule se rendit, there it is again, à pied au palais de Versailles, chercher le boulanger, la boulangère et les petites mitrons. What? To look for bread? Oh, historical reference, Queen Marie Antoinette's let them eat cake. We don't have a way to work for brioche in English. So we don't have a word for that in English. So instead of brioche, we say cake. Um, and oh, that's interesting historically. Lui du, okay, there's that passage historic again. Venir habiter la capitale, l'ancien régime n'existait plus. So I'm done with the text, but it's 15 minutes. So let me stop right there. I'm not going to do the exercises now. I'm going to put this here, and the next time I pick up, I'm going to have to pick up in the middle. So, um, in this fashion, you see the difference between working through the beginning text and the intermediate text. It's a simple truth of language learning. The more advanced you get, the more complicated it gets, the more interesting it gets, the more time you need to put into it, um, and the more you get out of it. I would say as a general rule of thumb, uh, yes, I recommend studying in 15-minute time blocks. One 15-minute time block might be sufficient for this level, two 15-minute time blocks for this level, and then when you're done with this, and again, you can see that this might also easily take you uh, a full year at this rate, uh, but if you thoroughly internalize this book, then you will be ready to move on to the next stage, which is where I think that autodidactic learning generally needs help. I think that you can work your way through these kind of books all on your own, but at that point, you're ready for, if you can arrange it, 
an immersion visit to France or another French speaking country or whatever language you're learning would, that's when you will profit the most, when you have given yourself the high intermediate level uh, that you want to get to. Uh, and then you will be able to really profit from interacting with people, speaking the language. If you are learning French to read literature, um, then this is the stage when you're going to want to bridge from using didactic materials to reading authentic texts and authentic novels. And that is another big bridge to cross. Uh, and so that's when you can really profit from participating in some sort of reading a discussion circle uh, with somebody who can guide you through and help you with the vocabulary and explanations. Um, but uh, in any case, this is how you can get to this level. And you saw once again that I had my assistant on my lap throughout this. His purring did help me focus and relax. I made the point before. Um, being catless does not mean that you cannot learn a language, but if you really want to um, succeed, um, then you should try to get access to a cat. The French like cats. If you're going to stick with French, it will be good practice for getting there. Um, I hope that this was interesting and valuable to you as a continuation for how to move on in your levels. Again, this is you're not when you finish this, you're nowhere near fluent, um, but you should be somewhere in the high intermediate range. Thank you.